Hi everybody, this is FT Raw. Welcome to the second part of our crash test tutorial. In the first part, we have made the basic car setup, and in this part, we are going to make the collision specific settings. First, we have to create a tag. You can find it in the drive tags menu. It's a crash box. The crash box tag is only available if you have bought the crash box add-on. As soon as you have assigned this tag, you will find a new um, panel here called collision. First is the collision detection shape. This shape is used for collision detection with other cars or obstacles, so we can let the software create it. Push create. This takes a bit because um, this outline will be calculated from all objects that are inside of the vehicle object. Now the shape is ready. And let's take a look on it. We can make the object invisible. And here is a new group called Collision. And there you find the shape. And this is the automatically calculated outline of the car. I will make the body invisible so that we can see the other elements used for collision. So next we have the crumpled zone. The crumpled zone is this area between the green box and the outline. And this area will be deformed during an impact. And when it's deformed it absorbs uh, some energy of the impact. And uh, here you see some values that you can set. And the important value is this maximum force value. This defines the rigidity of the uh, crumpled zone. So uh, if you set higher values, the crumpled zone will be very stiff. So you have to uh, set this value according to what you want to achieve with your animation. These values define the size of the Crumpled zone, if you set this front value, for example, to 80 centimeters, you see that this area will be bigger. I reset it. Here you see a force curve. This curve defines the behavior of the crumpled zone during the impact. Yeah, let me show you some other curves, maybe this one. In this case, the crumpled zone will be deformed very quickly and the rigidity increases very late, whereas this liner gives a constant increasing of counter force. Uh, in most cases, the default values are very good. Um, these, the size of the deformation zone, of the uh, crumpled zone, uh, you can uh, set it, but the other values are good as they are. The next is the behavior at impact. Um, here you can define what the car should do after or in, uh, in the moment of the impact and these default values are suited for a normal driver uh, who will brake um, and the car and, and try to stop the car whereas uh, if you have a, for instance um, a stock car race driver uh, you will not brake if someone 
touches him, so you would say um, none. This is that he will keep on pressing the throttle pedal. For our animation it's uh, the best to idle. This means that, um, that the throttle pedal will be released. And this for about 4 seconds. Okay, these are the basic collision parameters. So, now it's time for a first test. We need, um, at first we need a route, as always. I know it already. Create it here. At a speed point. Set the speed value to 100 kph. This will be the value we need for the animation. And I set the script value to 70% because um, I want that the car uh, bounces a little bit after it's, uh, it crashes on the obstacle. And if this grip, if the grip is too high, um, the tires will prevent this. Okay, let's see. The route is too short, I think, yes. So, go to the point mode and set this value to 5000 centimeters or 50 meters. Next, we need a collision box. It's a cube, it's a rigid body. Mm, we can use the, func the function here to create this cube. The advantage is that I created from here the box is already fitted with a tag That's, and the tag is needed otherwise the car will not recognize this box as an obstacle. So, oh, one word to this crash box tag. As you can see here, there are almost no parameters. Just the output panel gives you some possibilities to get values. So you, you can get the force and the force point um, where the crash occurs and you can put it via Expresso, in, for example, into the dynamic system of Cinema 4D. Okay, let's place it a bit far away. Okay, let's position here. A bit closer. And I will set it here, left side, as it would be in the animation. Mm. Yes, that's all. You can start the animation and see what happens. Okay, let's take a look at the result. This dotted yellow outline is internally used to detect collisions and to calculate the deformations of the crumple zone. It is resetted every time you run the simulation from startup by scanning the shape spline you've assigned. You can also see, let's zoom a bit, that this front wheel has been moved backwards. The car is now colored in red. That shows you that it's not able to drive anymore. A total damage for the insurance. So if you make animations with car crashes, you can always see which cars are totally damaged and cannot drive anymore. We can also see that the deformation has stopped here at the inner undeformable core. That's colored also in red now. So at that moment the rest of the impact energy that could not be absorbed will bound the car back. If we would have set this crumple zone softer, 
there would be more energy left and the car would bounce farther. Ok, we now have a lot of lines here, but the model is still intact. I guess you want to know how we get these damages on the car shape. And this is exactly the topic of the next part. See you!